Hello and welcome to episode three of your Leader Breeder podcast with myself and your host, Aidan Jeffrey. Leader Breeder podcast is a leadership podcast dedicated to helping you discover and develop your leadership voice in order to deliver greater value in your life, career, ministry, and business. In today's episode, we want to answer the question, why it is good for leaders to go away? And before we get into today's episode, I want to remind you about the release of my new book, Born to Prosper, The Essential Guide to Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life, as well as our new scripture confession app called Prosper Clock. It'll be available on Android and on iOS very soon. But if you want to find out more about the app, it's almost complete, and we've been working for that over the last few months. It is an app that is going to uh, act as an alarm, a clock, timer, stopwatch, all the the normal things. But it also allows you to record uh, scripture verses and uh, declarations over your life and triggers it off uh, when you set that alarm, and you can actually hear yourself confessing God's word over your own life because the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm excited for that app as it's part of the whole Born to Prosper bouquet uh, with all the different devotionals, uh, the seminars, all those things. You can go and find out more about these great resources at IamBornToProsper.com. And we're going to continue on our journey together to make you understand and get you in your spirit, man, to understand that uh, you are born to prosper on this earth for purpose and you are born again to prosper in eternity for permanence. And uh, one more thing I just want to ask you and appreciate if you would be so kind to subscribe to the Leader Breeders podcast as well as to share this episode and future episodes with your world. Thank you to those of you that have been giving me feedback and encouraging words and telling me how much the podcast have been helping you and blessing you as well as our 90-day daily devotional podcast that have been out as well. And then also tomorrow you'll be able to get my Q&A podcast that we did recently. We'll be doing those on a regular basis where we'll be talking to prominent leaders around the world, nationally and internationally, and discussing their leadership journey and their leadership process with them. And tomorrow you'll be able to get, for the first time, episode one of our Q&A Leader Breeder podcast with Pastor Rick Godwin. I recently interviewed him, and he had such profound truths to teach. So tomorrow you can access that as well. So please share these episodes, and let's continue on our journey of understanding why leadership is so important. So I'm expecting for today's episode, and so let's set out to answer the question today, why it is good for leaders to go away. Now, before you think that I'm thinking that you know there's no need for leadership, let me uh, clarify that for you, because one of the, the greatest and most profound leaders ever to walk on the face of the planet was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus at one point said this in John 16, verse 7 to his disciples, He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. You know, we've looked at the last few episodes. Our first episode, we looked at our leaders developed, our leaders born. And our last episode, our previous one, we looked at how to increase your value in life. And that's why today I felt to talk about why it is important for leaders to go away because it's one of the greatest misconceptions I think that many leaders never understood. I, did, I never understood this for many years and it really helped me so much in my own leadership journey when I started to understand the importance of leaders going away. Now, please, like I said, I'm not saying to you, you should not, there's, there's no place for leadership. It's critical. Everything rises and falls on leadership. But one of the greatest things I've seen is that people start out either in business or ministry or whatever it is, They set out on this journey, they get given more responsibility, and the more responsibility they have, they find themselves being more trapped and more stuck in not being able to actually exit their own wills, and they get so much responsibility placed on them, they're not sure if they're coming or going, they have to spend more time at the office. But Jesus was very clear when he set out on his ministry on the earth, he was very clear to tell his disciples that I've come that you might have life and you might have it in abundance. I've come for a mission and a purpose, but it is also to your advantage that I go away. It's important that leaders understand, that you understand today, that as a leader, you have to have an exit strategy to whatever it is that you are busy leading because you'll never be in the same place forever. And we talk about abdication or delegation, and leaders uh, have to learn to delegate as well. And the other side is leaders can abdicate. In other words, they can end up Uh, leaving their place of responsibility too soon and they actually leave 
everybody in the lurch and they haven't equipped people around them. And that is why Jesus was intentional. The first thing that he found when he came onto the earth was 12 men to impart an impact into 12 men. The, the key responsibility of understanding their purpose and their call in the sense of becoming fishers of men. And he had to disciple these 12 men so that he could leave the kingdom and the responsibility with them at some point. So Jesus had a very clear exit strategy. And I want to say that to you as well today. And as a leader, if you can get one thing today, and that is to understand that you must have an exit strategy in the place that you currently are leading. And by that, I don't mean you should have an exit strategy to abdicate or to do nothing or to leave your organization or leave your place of responsibility. By that, I'm saying the Bible tells us that by this, my father is glorified, John 15 verse 8, that you bear much fruit. And so Jesus is into us bearing much fruit and the fruit that remains, says the Bible. So leadership understanding is critical to get into your mind that in order to take territory, in order to advance, you have to raise up more people. You have to equip more people. So Jesus equipped 12 men and that allowed him then to have an exit strategy. And the exit strategy wasn't for him to go and do nothing. It was for him to go to be with his father, to go to be seated at the right hand of the father. And it was to advance the purpose for which he came. And that's what leadership understanding you have to get into your heart and your and your mind and your head. I've spoken to so many entrepreneurs over the years, pastors in particular as well, and they find that they're so busy. They've got no time for their family. They've got no time for their kids. They've got no time for fun or for a bit of rest, or they've got no time for many things in their life. They start to become just on this hamster wheel of grind because they've started this business or they've started this, this ministry or they've started this place of responsibility, but they never actually are intentional to get out. I'm going to look at that a little bit today and to discuss around a few of these thoughts about why it is important that you must be able to go away. You must be able to leave the place that you are at right now. But in the saying that, notice what Jesus said. He said, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Speaking of in this case, in his case, the, the Holy Spirit, which was poured out on Pentecost, which is now with us. But that's the principle of leadership is that as a leader, when you raise, when you yourself establish something, Jesus went about preaching, teaching, and healing all those that are sick and oppressed of the devil. So he physically demonstrated, he physically did things, he physically was involved. But then at one point he came and he said to his disciples, listen, it's now to your advantage. Because when you overstay your place or your position of authority for too long, you start to stifle the growth of any organization. So it's important for you not to leave too soon, in other words, abdication, but it's important for you to plan and to start preparing your people to say, it's good that I go away. Why? Because when I go away, I can send you help. I can send those with other gifts and talents and skills because no matter how gifted and talented you are as a leader, you're not equipped, you're not skilled, you're not gifted by God to do everything yourself. There are some people that are gifted to do administration there are some people that hate administration. There are some people that are gifted to do sales and some people that hate to do sales, but they all work in the same organization. And there are some that are detailed, some that are not very detailed in their planning, in their days. And so when you position people in the right places in your organization, it's important that you as the founder, or you as the leader, or you as the, as the CEO, the CFO, whatever position you hold, or as the pastor, the district pastor, whatever position of authority you hold, it's important for you first to establish whatever it is that you were sent to establish. Jesus was sent to establish the church and his kingdom on this earth. But then he intentionally had an exit strategy. It's good that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. And that's why so many people stifle their own growth in their organizations, in their ministries, in their zones, in their structures, in their home cells, because they're never really intentional to actually leave at some point. They just think, well, I was given this position of authority and I'm now just going to, you know, be a good, a faithful over little, rule over much. And all that is true. But notice what Jesus himself said. He said, it's good that I go away. So as a home cell leader, in our case, in the ministry, are you intentional to actually go away? And what does it mean to go away as a home cell leader? It means that you're going to now become either a coordinator or a supervisor, or you're going to go to another home cell and you're going to 
multiply your home cell and leave your current home cell with your 2IC or your 3IC, which you have to raise up like Jesus raised up 12 disciples. And when he raised up 12 disciples, uh, he was able to leave the responsibility of what he'd established with them. That's how you advance. That's how you increase, is you are able to leave what you've established behind you, not for it to disappear or for it to be worse off or for it to go away, but actual fact for it to continue so that you can now go and take new territory. That's how the, the kingdom of God advances. That's how businesses advance. That's how any startup company that, that starts to grow, it starts to advance, but it needs more hands. It needs more people. It needs more help. And so Jesus said, if I don't go away from the place that I am right now, I can't send you the helper. And so that's why you need to start thinking and planning in your own head and heart. Where are you today? As a business owner, you might be listening to this as a supervisor, as a department head, as a pastor. You know, if you're doing everything in the church, it's going to cost you either burnout or it's going to cost you, you're going to stifle the ministry because you can't do everything yourself. As much as what you are maybe responsible initially to launch something, to birth something, to cast the vision of something, but it is important you understand a leader must be able to go away at some point. And the only way that you can go away is twofold, is that you've raised up another leader in order to go in that place, the helper, like Jesus said, he's going to send the helper. Can you put somebody in a position of authority in the place that you were at? So in other words, you, you've taken up responsibility for that. And secondly is you've got to put systems in place because one of the greatest things I've seen with leadership is they get so busy running the business or running the structure, running the organization that they started or the department they were given responsibility for. And then by the time they finished working or they've worked long hours because they're responsible and they've seen such incredible growth and we're so grateful and my skill and my gift and my talents have built this. And you're right, you are potentially the person that is the magnet towards people wanting to do business with you or people wanting to you know, be under your leadership, and that's all good. But if you cannot go away at some point, you will eventually stifle that same thing that was growing so well. You'll end up stifling it. And you have to understand the importance of those two areas is that you have to continually be raising up new leadership. And secondly, you must be able to put systems in place in order for you to assist the person that you are going to, who is going to either replace you or the person who's going to take responsibility, the system is what is going to help you to become a more effective leader in order to scale the organization that you're in. You know, when I was in business years ago, I had a, a I was in the salary industry and the industry that I was in, we weren't earning residual income. In other words, you know, ongoing revenue. We were earning monthly, you know, every 30 days we, we did reconciliations of the contracts we signed and the business we did, and then they'd pay you out a lump sum, and then you were basically back to zero every 30 days. And so when I got the revelation of residual income, of pipeline income, of making money while you're not there, which we'll cover in the episodes ahead about why it's important for you to build pipeline income in any facet, ministry, that's part of your ability to go away is if you every 30 days you, you're back to zero, you know, you've got to be there because I'm responsible. I can't get out of this place. That is why part of your system development has to also be thought towards your pipeline possibilities, your pipeline income. And we'll discuss that in the episodes ahead. But I was in business years ago and I realized that, you know, I couldn't go away. Every time somebody wanted to come into my store, my cellular business, they always asked for me because I was the cell phone guy. I was the man. I was the person that everybody looked towards because I had the knowledge. And then the Lord started to show me this was, it is to my advantage that I go away. If I don't go away, I can't send you the helper. And when I started to you know, meditate on this and, and reason on this, I've shared this in a few episodes past as well, is that Matthew 25, when Jesus speaks about the delegation of the talents, five, two, and one, in Matthew 25, 14, he says what? He says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And that's what the Lord said to me. He said, you have to be able to go to a far country because how do you stay on the cutting edge of what's happening in your industry? How do you get away from the four walls of your organization to go and learn what's the new trends, what's upcoming? How do you 
rub shoulders with new potential clients as the founder of the business or the pastor of the church? How do you advance your church if you have to be there to do all the counseling and all the weddings and all the funerals and all the daily grind, all the admin? And it's because we're not intentional. We haven't actually had the mindset to say, I've got to get out. I go in to get out. That's why it's so important you understand that. And when the Lord started to show me this when I was in business and even in ministry, when I went into ministry, we've planted 10 or 12 churches in Cape Town around the area. And one of the things, one of the reasons was that the Lord also said to me that, you know, when you uh, you have to be able to raise up people to advance in different ways, to increase the work on the ground, but you can't do it all. You need help. And so when I was in business, the Lord said to me, you're unable to go away. Everybody's looking for you. And so what I started to do was I started saying to myself, okay, I'm going to be in my office doing certain things. And then I would get a knock on my door and it'll be like one of my staff saying, hi, um, Mr. So-and-so in the front is looking for you. And I'll say, what does he want? He says, I don't know. I try to help him, but he said he wants to speak to you. So I used to get up from my desk and walk to the front and go, hi, how are you? And he goes, hi, how are you? And he'd look at me and say to me, you know, can I have 29 Rand airtime? And I'd look at my staff member and he shrugs his shoulders and, sorry, the guy wanted you. And that's when I started to realize that, you know, everything was built around me. And like I say, today we serve Jesus. The kingdom of God is built around the name that is above all names. But he's not here physically with us at the moment. He came, he established, and then he went away and he sent us a helper. So for you to understand the growth in business, in ministry, in every facet of your life is you have to go to a place, establish something, and then raise up people with systems, simultaneously systems and people, so that you can exit and go away. It is to your advantage that you go away. Why? Because then you'll be able to earn income or gain territory in the area that you initially worked at. But when you raise up competent leaders in the place that you are at, you then can hold on to that territory and take new territory. That's how you advance. You put those systems in place. And when you get to the second part of your territory or your second batch of customers, your third batch of customers, at every place of exit, you have to put a person in place, a helper that is competent, that you've raised up, that you've equipped, that you've put into place. So for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And then the Lord said to me, when you deliver your goods, your goods are your company. It's my baby. It's my little child, my plan. It was my dream. It was my idea. It was my church. It's my district. It's my ministry. It's my company. It's my whatever it is. I'm possessive over this thing because if I'm not here, will it survive? And that's the key to leadership is the key to understand that if you don't go away, the helper, those with additional skills and expertise, you know, can't be in those places because I can guarantee you, there is somebody who can do something better than you in the same company or the same ministry that you founded simply because they gifted differently to you. And if you add that skill of theirs to your skill, you now become a more competent and a well-rounded organization. This is what the Bible says in Ephesians 4.16. The Bible says, from whom the whole body, that's the body of Christ, the church, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. So there is a person that is waiting to be employed in your organization or to be employed in your district or to be equipped or to be pulled into that is actually going to become part of completing the puzzle or the body, putting the working parts in place that they can supply, their skill can supply. But if you're in the way, if you're controlling everything to the point where you know there's no place for anybody else, you are going to stifle your growth and you're going to end up being that person that is going to be either, like I said, burnt out or you're going to stifle the growth of that organization. Paul goes on to say in Ephesians 4, he says what? He says, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So notice what he says. He says, by which every part does its share. So when every part does its share, listen to what he goes on to say to the church in Corinth at one point. He says in 1 Corinthians 12, 21, he says, And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. So sometimes your strength can actually become your weakness. Because when you think in your strength, you go, but no one can do it like I can do it. 
And that actually becomes a weakness because there is somebody else in the member which seems to be weaker, but they are necessary. So listen what he says. They, they seem to be, and they most likely are weaker than you when it comes to your gifting because you are you. You are gifted like you are gifted. And, you know, that's why if you need two of you, there's no need for one of you if you, are, if you both are identical. So notice Paul says, imitate me. He doesn't say clone me or, or copy me. He says, take attributes from our leadership and follow that as I follow Christ, as I take attributes from Christ's life and I follow that. But if you're trying to clone somebody or you're trying to be like somebody else, you know, and you're not yourself, who God gifted you to be, can't add value to the place that you're actually supposed to add value. And when you bring your skill and I bring my skill and the other person brings their skill, now we start to form a body or an organization or a a structure or a home cell, and it becomes well-rounded. So listen what he goes on to say in verse 23. He says, And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. So he says, sometimes there's parts of you that, that there's no need of it now anymore. There's somebody else that's actually very gifted, and they'd love to do what you are doing. And you're frustrated in what you're doing because you're doing too much. But there is actually somebody else who would love to do what you're doing, but you need to get out the way. It's good for you to go away. It's to your advantage that you go away. But he says this, he says, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it, that there should be no schism, no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So this is what Paul is saying to the church. He's saying that um, you must understand the importance of you need to go, establish, and then get out the way. And when you get out the way, you send a helper. You send a person who's competent, either employed or you've raised up in the organization to place in that place. And if you look at so many organizations that are pastors, I see they just they can't seem to get past, you know, their own sort of gifting. And I don't criticize pastors. I don't criticize businessmen per se because you are the founder. You are the person who saw the idea and you've taken a lot of responsibility, a lot of you know, guts and determination, blood, sweat, and tears to get you to where you are. But you know, if you look today at companies like around the world, successful you know, organizations, Apple, for example, the iPad that I'm you know, referring to today or my notes and things like that, it was a guy called Steve Jobs. I mean, he's no longer... On the earth, he died of cancer, but his, his organization has continued to flourish. It's actually become more successful since he's gone away. Look at Jesus and his church. I mean, imagine if Jesus, you know, had to do the same thing over and over and over and over again for 2,000 years. You know, if he was immortal and he never went away, you know, it'll all be just, oh, well, we're just going to watch Jesus do his thing. But eventually what he did was he put the responsibility back into our hands. He first with his 12 disciples. And then he told them to go and make disciples of all nations. He told them to go and raise up more people. And so if you understand that conveyor belt of continually sending people into places, and then when you go away, you then hold the person that you've placed over your previous position of authority. You then hold them accountable to then duplicate themselves. And so this continual conveyor belt uh, continues. In ministry in particular, you know, you find that pastors, we shepherds, we build relationships with people. And our hearts become knitted to the people. And if you stay in that place too long, where your heart is, is knitted too long to the people, uh, although, you know, we love you, Pastor. You're a great leader. Thank you so much for your impact in my life, Pastor. That's all good initially. But Jesus also, he was, you know, the one day they threw palm branches and the next day they said, crucify him. So you're going to have ups and downs in leadership. But ultimately, you have to keep the, the purpose of why you started that business the forefront of what you're doing. You can't get involved with too friendly with the customers or too friendly with the, the members. And, the, and by that, I don't mean you should be unfriendly to the members. I'm speaking about our job as the fivefold ministry is to equip the believer to do the work of the ministry. So if you understand that in leadership, it's the same. You know, when I established a few businesses as well, I started in the cellular industry. Like I said earlier, people would ask for me. And eventually I got this revelation of residual income. And so I had to pursue this relationship or this new venture to try and get my business to start earning pipeline income. So I sat my staff down of the current company that I was in. 
And I said to them, it's good that I go away to establish this new leg of potential income for us. But if I go away and you guys drop the ball when I'm gone, we all are going to suffer. We all are going to go under. So it's important that you step up, step out, and take responsibility. And remember we said, Jesus said, it's the same thing. For the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 25, is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants, his staff, and delivered his goods to them. So as a leader, as a business owner, as a pastor, as a district leader, you should be able to give many of the responsibilities in your church. You should be able to give it over to people, deliver your goods to them, and then hold them accountable. Because Matthew 25 goes on to say the master eventually returned and then held them accountable. And that's what the Lord said to me. The Lord said to me that it's biblical, Aiden, for you to go away and come back and expect fruit or expect results or expect profit or expect expansion of the place where the person has been placed. Uh, you know, if I look at myself in ministry as well, I am responsible for being in Cape Town. I am responsible and I have to be held accountable for that as well, as much to, I have to hold my staff accountable. So it's this continual conveyor belt of we can never rest on our laurels or become comfortable with yesterday's victories or yesterday's successes or yesterday's territory gain. There's continually more territory to gain. The fields are white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. So pray that the Lord send out the laborers into the harvest field. That means you should be spending as much time planning the expansion of your sales side of your business as much as it is you should be planning about who am I going to replace in certain areas or who am I going to put into certain areas because I need to go away so I can advance, take more territory in other areas. And that's what you need to keep understanding. Paul had a Timothy. Who is your Timothy? Who is the person you're raising up? Listen to what the Bible says in Colossians 4 verse 8. The Bible says uh, in Colossians 4 verse 8, I'm sending him to you for this very purpose. Paul writing to the church that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts, which uh, Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, they will make known to you all things which are happening here. So Paul says, I'm going to send you one of our brothers to your church in Colossae so you can know what's happening on the ground and he can comfort your hearts. He can encourage you in your quest to continue taking ground for Jesus and his kingdom. He says, and they will make known to you all things which are happening here. Listen what Paul writes to the church. He says, I'm going to send a beloved brother Timothy to you who is going to tell you about my ways in the Lord. So it's important that we understand this continual pattern in Scripture throughout the Bible. Paul said, I've run my race. I've kept the faith. I've finished the course. It's good that I go away. I'm now going to go away. Jesus, it's good that I go away. And my question to us today in this month's episode is, I want to challenge you and encourage you to look at your own world and ask yourself the question, how often are you able to go away um, for a weekend away or a week away or two weeks away. It was quite funny. I was preaching for Pastor Ut a few months ago, whenever it was, and I preached on the Sunday for him. And I returned on the Tuesday. I had something to do on the Monday. And while I was in the gym on the Monday morning, one of the people came up to me in the gym and said, Hey, Pastor, thank you so much for last night's message. And I went, Okay, great. You know, that it's a great honor to preach for Pastor Ut. She said to me, but pastor, when are you going back? Who runs Cape Town if you're sitting over here? You know, how do you manage that? And like, uh, she was quite taken aback that I was still in Pretoria and I wasn't back in Cape Town because who runs the church if you're not there? And I said to her, and now I've got staff that run the church. And sometimes, you know, people look at you and think, well, you, know, you should be hearing straight back to go there because without you, everything's going to fall flat. And sure, again, abdication, delegation. If you abdicate something too soon, it's going to going to fall flat because there's no structure there's no people of competence that you've raised up definitely but you have to get to the place where jesus was able to delegate his kingdom to uh, his disciples he was able to go away and look what happened when he went away the help of the holy spirit came who quickened and activated things that jesus was only able to do in one place but yet when it came to when it came to jesus ministry what did we find we found that he was able to go away, and as a result of that, he was able to increase his ministry and his work, and we took ground. And today, where are we? We've got the Church of Jesus Christ, which is strong, which is growing, which is increasing all the time. Why? Because Jesus was able to go away. And that's my challenge to you today. 
is I want to say to you today as well, it's good that you go away. Notice, not leave and don't do anything and abdicate your position and sit uh, on your rusty dusty now and see your company or your structure or your church dissipate around you. But it is critical that you are intentional to raise up leaders. And as well as getting home at night is not just worrying about your tomorrow, how you'll pay the bills or what you'll eat or drink, but it's also it's critical that you sit down at night and you actually are intentional to give some of your week to system development and you know streamlining the flows of your organization, your company, and then coming back to your staff on a regular basis and shifting people's mindsets, moving people into the right places to smooth out all the glitches in your organization, the, the bumps in the road, and that's you. That's part of your responsibility. But so many people struggle to do that, not because they're bad people. It's because they, they're stuck in the grind of doing everything themselves. You know, there's an old statement that I always uh, share with my leaders, I always talk about who then when, who before when. So people say, when are we going to do this? And when are we going to do that? And when are we going to do this? And my question always is, well, who's going to do it? Because if I have to do everything that the church or members or people suggest to me, there's going to be 65 things I have to do, but I'm only one person. So we have to be intentional to raise up who's. And when we raise up who's on a regular basis, and those who's are able to stand in the position of competence, in the position of responsibility, in the place that you were at initially, what's going to happen? Five is going to become 10. Two will become four. But notice the one, I was afraid, so I hid my talent. I just went through the daily grind of repeating the same thing over and over and over, but I never actually developed somebody else. And what does Jesus say? You lazy and wicked servant, for you knew that I demanded growth or increase, and now you've done nothing. You could have put my money with the bankers where I could have at least earned interest. And so I really just want to encourage you this month in your leadership development process. Perhaps you on a start out, you're starting out a young business. Well, you know, that's why most startups never start up is because the founder is so engrossed in doing everything himself or herself, they never are intentional to say, I need to send help, I need to get help, I need to raise up the help, whichever one comes first, whichever one you can afford first, either employing a person or else, you know, raising up somebody within your organization. So it's critical that you understand uh, your value component, we spoke of the last episode, you know, how to increase your value and income in life. And that's to the places you go, the books you read, the people you meet. So that never ends. That's your personal development of you. But now, once you know more, you, you are more competent in your areas, how is your organization going to keep growing and taking territory if the people around you aren't growing? So part of your responsibility as well is to challenge the people around you what books are you reading? You know, what seminars are you attending? What courses are you attending? And so this process, it never ends. The leadership development, leadership succession, leadership continuation should never end. That's why governments stifle. That's why churches stifle, why businesses stifle. It's because everything is built around the guy who started the company. Again, like I said, it's critical that as long as the person who started the company is alive and he's able or she's able, then that's fine. But what happens when they're not here? Uh, suddenly the person, you know, goes to be with the Lord or suddenly the person, you know, uh, is incapacitated in some shape, form or size. And now the whole company, you know, stands dead still because when that person leaves, everything stands still. And it's important. I don't say immediately. I mean, Jesus took three years to raise up his 12 disciples. So I don't say instantly. But how old is your company? Five years, 10 years, and you're still doing everything yourself? I want to encourage you. It is good that leaders must go away. Why is it good for leaders to go away? Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. And if I depart, I will send him to you. So notice when the master went away, when Paul went away, Timothy took over. When Timothy went away, the next leader took over. And so Abram, then Isaac, then Jacob. It's the God of generational blessing. And so you must understand that. Again, I don't say give all your shares away. Again, I don't say get rid of your company. I'm saying, are you able to take more territory in your company because you've been faithful in raising up other people so that you can go away? The last thing I want to say in conclusion today is I you know, read an article a few years ago where the person was talking about the test of a true entrepreneur is the ability to go away for 30 days 
without being involved at all in his organization or her organization. And that organization can go through one full pay run. Customers are serviced, sales happen, logistics, deliveries, R&D, whatever it is, uh, admin, everything takes place for one full cycle without you even being consulted once. In other words, not, you know, crisis management, you know, I, I don't know what to do because you weren't here. That's a true test of an entrepreneur. Now, again, I said, if you've gone for 60 days, I'm sure your company will go in decline because you are the founder and you are the, the voice of that organization. I don't say that the leader should be absent or should be neutralized. I'm saying to you today, it's critical that you, are, you understand that it is good for leaders to go away because when you're able to go away from the place where you initially set up responsibility, you can send help. And when that, those people bring their skills, the eye, the hand, the foot, the elbow, every joint supplies, causing growth of the body. So I'm excited for you. This month, spend time. As much as what you're spending time working hard, spend time working smart. Sit down, take a pen and paper or your technology, whatever you use, and apply your mind. Where are the frustrations in my organization? Where are the customers complaining? Where are we losing traction where are we losing ground and start to apply your mind think and as you think you know as a man thinketh in his heart so easy think how can i improve things read a book consult people phone people google stuff and start to implement different systems ask your staff what do you believe what do you feel and get uh, feedback from people on the ground get the heartbeat of the people and as you learn those things and you bring some shifts and changes what seemed like bad or chaotic or detrimental to your organization is actually not that bad because you actually took sound advice and you were then able to say, well, okay, I realize. So if I'm in the way, I'm going to put this person here or whatever it might be. And as you do that, watch what's going to happen. You're going to see exponential growth. You're going to see God increase you. God bless you. God is going to take you to levels of blessing that you've never understood before because it's a biblical principle for leaders to be able to go away. So work at that this month. Uh, be intentional, like I said, not to abdicate, but to raise up people and to empower other people. You know, the definition of a CEO is, I always say, should not be the chief executive officer, but it should be the chief empowerment officer, where you empower people to do. And when you do that, watch what happens. God is going to surprise you. He is going to astound you with incredible growth and increase because you are called what? You are born to prosper. You are born to be fruitful. You are born to multiply. You are born to fill the earth. You are born to subdue it, subjection, and you are born to go into a place of dominion. So your destination is dominion. Your destination is not fruitfulness. It's the lowest form of God's blessing. When you start out a business and you start to make a little bit of income or turnover, profit, you're now fruitful. That's just the start of your journey. I encourage you again, get a copy of my book. I explain all those things in there as well. I'm not trying to upsell you. Just trying to encourage your faith today. So come on. I really want to encourage you. Let me pray for you today. And let's ask God for his favor, his blessing, his increase as you go into this month and you are expectant. You are going to run to win this month. Amen. You are going to see great and mighty things God is going to use you for this month. So be expectant. Amen. So Father, I thank you today for every person who's taken the time to be on this podcast today. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom, tenacity, strength. I pray for those that are going through different challenges, battles, Father, that you'll come to them, that you'll give them wisdom beyond their years, that as they seek, knock and ask, Father. I pray that you will show them exactly. Give them a strategy. You said, Father, that creation is yearning for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. The earth is in a mess, Father, and you've raised up your, your kingdom children to be the wisdom of heaven on earth. You said your will to be done on earth, and you poured it out into the hearts of your children. So I pray, Father, for CEOs, CFOs, those in places of uh, positions of authority, those that are in positions of divisional authority, perhaps it's department heads or supervisors, perhaps it's somebody listening today that doesn't think they're a leader, Father. I pray you'll activate in them. Every person is called to lead. Some are called to be leaders of thousands, others leaders of hundreds, and others leaders of tens. But every person is called to lead. I pray, Father, that you'll activate leadership, development and leadership responsibility in all of your children in jesus mighty name today we pray well thank you so much for listening to this month's uh, episode and i really just want to encourage you please be so kind as to like and to share this episode if you'll do me a favor as well i want to give away a few copies of my book born to prosper 
And if you'll be so kind as to go to Instagram and to follow our Leader Breeder, look, search for Leader Breeder, the Instagram page, and then just uh, in the comment section there, say on this on this post, say, you know, I've shared this thing with somebody and we're going to put you into a draw. And it'll be my privilege and honor to send you a few copies of my book, Born to Prosper, to bless your life, to increase your life. And if you have bought a copy of the book already, please give us some feedback. Tell us what it's done for you, what it means to you. It's always encouraging for us to uh, to hear some positive feedback as people are busy developing and growing. Remember, you're not born to a life of lack and struggle. You're born to a life of prosperity in Christ. And you are born to prosper on this earth for purpose. And you are born again to prosper in eternity for permanence. Have a great, great day. Have a great, great week. Have a great, great month. I'll see you next in episode four. And I'm excited to be with you very soon again. Be blessed and have an awesome, awesome time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us here at Leader Breeder. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch the next episode every month.